the NCAA is considering the possibility of running the clock after incomplete passes because they need to shorten the games. The games are getting much, much longer. Uh, This is from Seth Emerson over at The Athletic. College football games are taking longer, and everyone, including TV, wants to fix that. Uh, If you look at the schedules, which we do in the viewing guide every week, of course, and we'll do that at the end of the show, but on the viewing guide, uh, you notice that there is a time window. And it's, it's typically three hours. Sometimes they put three and a half or whatever for college football games. That's the neat little window that it's supposed to fit in. And yet, it's not fitting in that. It's not. It would be wonderful if you could get every game to fit somewhere between three hours and 15 minutes and three hours and 30 minutes. The only ones that you were getting to do that are like Air Force, Navy this weekend. That's about it. Uh, and the reason for it is, well, let's, let's see. It says, you're not imagining it. College football games are taking longer and not a small amount longer. Um, the television networks and their annoying timeouts are not to blame nor are the long replay reviews. It's not even the epic weather delays because even if you take out or take those out, the average college football game has lengthened by four minutes since 2017, now out to an average of three hours and 22 minutes, even though the number of plays is going down. It says four minutes is a lot, uh, according to the NCAA coordinator of officials, Steve Shaw, who tracks the data. Uh, the why is very complex. It says perhaps, but there is one main uh, overriding reason why game times have gone up so much lately. Passing. Now, it, go and go to The Athletic. If you don't already have a subscription, it, it, they're not paying me to do this, but I'm telling you, go ahead and check them out. Um, they are, they've done this FBS-wide per game averages for both teams. In 2002, you had 27.9 incompletions um, and 39.5 first downs. So, and then only 9.1 TDs and field goals. So, only 9.1 scores per game. You look in 2022, 23.9 incompletions, uh, 43.4 first downs, and 10.3 touchdowns and field goals. So, while the incompletions have gone down, the first downs and the touchdowns and field goals have gone up. So, it, it's a lot more. And when you look at rushes, which, of course, the clock continues after a run, whenever you stay in bounds, of course, uh, 79 rushes per game at two, in 2002 to 77.6 in 2012 to 74.6 so far this season. Um, a, lot more, a lot more teams are passing the ball. Like, it's just, uh, you, you can look at, uh, Alabama's the perfect example of this. Go back to 2008 and look at Nick Saban's offense. And then look at it in 2016. And then look at it now. I mean, it's they're passing the ball, what, 65% of the time? I mean, it's absolutely insane. Uh, I don't think that that's the only thing that you would have to do is just run the clock even after an incomplete pass. I don't think that's the only thing. Uh, I think you could save a whole lot of snaps, a whole lot of everything. And we've talked about this on the show before where if you were to keep the clock running after a first down, keep the clock running when they go out of bounds, keep the clock running on an incomplete pass, like all of those different things shorten the game, allow you to play less snaps, uh, give you more volatility as far as the scores go, so you don't have these super talented teams that have more opportunities for the best player to win on any given play, uh, you have all sorts of things that would work in your favor as a sport overall if you were to do these things. Not only that, you could save up to two full games worth of snaps per season if you were to do all these things. There are ways to make this work to make the game shorter, which is better for the fan, better for TV, etc., um, but also better for the student-athletes which I know that we've kind of forgotten about them here uh, with the sport and everything that's been going on, but that's still something that's massive, especially when it comes to, like, an expanded playoff. You're asking these kids to play even more games per season. Like, why not just find a way to to lower the amount of snaps that they have to play on a per-game basis? And, And overall on the season, I think it makes a lot of sense. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. 
follow Gary on Twitter at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.